Hello everyone and welcome back to Hemeldale Model Railway. So in today's video, we take a look at some of the work that I've been doing over the last few days. We take a look at the retaining wall section for the river, the completion of painting all of the rocks. We take a quick look at the coal merchant scene. We also take a look at the completion of the hills for the viaduct scene. And at the end of this video, I will give you a bit of a layout tour and show you the progress that I've made on this scene here. Plus, I will show you a little bit more with what I've done on the track work and have a little bit of a running session at the end of this video. So thanks for joining everyone and let's go and take a look at what I've been doing over the last four days. Right, so as you can see, I've got a selection here of WWS products. I've got some uh, Spring 2 mil. I've got some Wild Meadow 6 mil, some Dead Grass 2 mil, Winter Grass 2 mil, Autumn 4 millimeter, Dead 4 millimeter, some Patchy 4. Uh, some summer grass and I've also got like the basing glues and some layering sprays and stuff like that as well um, and then I've got some um, woodland scenics uh, bushes to add a little bit of detail around the rock edges uh, just to sort of blend those in with the static grassing so in here what I've done is just under half filled with uh, two millimeter spring two millimeter dead and two millimeter summer and then just gave it a bit of a mix in with the end of the paintbrush and then just used my finger to uh, get rid of some of like the uh, the balls and stuff like that that are inside where they all kind of like clumps together um, so in there is sort of quite a bit of a blended mix 
and then what I'll do is then use some slightly lighter shades uh, with the different um, lengths with the four millimeter and then onto six millimeter as I go further back at the layer. So this is gonna be my first layer. So my first attempt at static grassing, I think the blend of colours looks pretty good and where the light sort of shines on some of the rock faces and stuff, it's starting to blend in quite nicely. Um, if I take you into sort of like the stones and stuff that are sort of poking out through the grasses um, I think the colours look quite good and then I can tone down these uh, stones here uh, but I've gone for some sort of like dark uh, sooty sort of colours because it's quite close to the tracks um, but as you can see where the light shines it kind of goes white and then sort of greys off a little bit so I'm hoping that in different camera shots you'll see different tones and textures on those sections there Got to hoover up a load of this uh, static grass. It does go absolutely everywhere. Um, but what I'm doing is just gently brushing off the stonework and then putting it into a little pot just so that I'm uh, saving some of the static grasses and stuff. And then I'm just filling up the hopper and reusing it in some of the areas where it's not as uh, standing up. I mean, most of it, is pretty much standing up. Um, I'll give it a little bit of a hoover on the top. But it's kind of that sort of uh, wild field look. I didn't want it as a pristine bit of grass. Uh, so looking up here, you can see that there's sort of uh, different patches and colors that are going through on that section. So yeah, all in all, um, do quite like the static grass. Um, does mean that some of this section is now 
um, a little bit more sort of uh, good for the camera. It's quite nice to have um, some better colours rather than the sort of chocolate browns that are all over the layout at the moment. Um, that one up there looks like a bar of chocolate at the moment, uh, but it's still a little bit wet. Um, and where that white edge is, is uh, where it'll be a little hillside forming down onto the baseboard. So I won't be actually um, paint, needing to paint that edge yet because there'll be some fillers and stuff that will go in there. But that's where the viaducts will sit in on that section. And basically it's just the undercoat colours, uh, just in case any of the grasses don't go. You can kind of, better than the, having the white there, it's got some of the browns. Um, but all in all, I think, yeah, that's... Uh, you know, from a distance, I don't think that looks too bad, really. I um, quite like the colours. And, uh, yeah, the, the the rocks from a distance look a lot better than they do close up. Because um, there won't be too many sort of close up shots. Of all of it, but... You know, when I'm doing sort of running sessions and stuff, looking at the tracks down at this sort of kind of level. Um, yeah, I think that they... Uh, they look pretty good. Uh, the section in front of you, I'm just working on uh, building some sort of slopes for trucks and stuff to go up in that section, so it's a little bit wet yet. Uh, still, I've just painted that up and just added some filler in on that section. And then I've still got to uh, work out my uh, retaining wall for this section. So this scene is starting to um, to really kind of take shape now. So these are the hills where the viaduct sit in and what I've been doing now is just going over with some 2 mil mix and going over all of these parts on this section. I'm going over with a 2 mil first so that the sections at the back will be sort of at that 2 mil grass look so from a distance it will just look like some hills with a little bit of the uh, brown showing through. I um, don't know if you can kind of see if I try and zoom in a little bit just sort of showing a little bit of edging to some sort of like muds that are coming through on those sections. Um, it's quite hard with the static grass to do um, such variation in shapes. I think it's quite easy with um, a flat section, but it does kind of look sort of ruffled up a little bit. And then the, uh, the viaduct arch will sit through there so you won't see all of that brown there. But then there's some sort of edging of some muds and stuff. Uh, so with the 2 mil, it's coming out alright. I'm just doing it on very small sections. And then this bit towards the front here, 
I'll be layering it up with um, some sort of 4mm just to give it that little bit of height and stuff to this edge along here so I get rid of the uh, chocolate brown at the back there as you can see that's this section here that I'm working on um, and I've just got it down sort of on this bench here so that I can kind of scoop up any excess and add it back into the hopper uh, so I'm halfway through and now I've just got this piece here to work on um, exactly why I made it kind of removable just so that it was so easy just to be able to do it then I can glue the bottom stick it in place and then what I'll do is with uh, this edging here um, I will plaster all along here so it kind of meets to what will be not this part of the baseboard but the baseboard towards the back there just along that line that will then smooth down and then I can just easily reach over and be able to uh, static grass just that little section that runs along there and then that way I'm not leaning over any of this stuff that I've done on this section here so I think once that's uh, kind of tied in quite nicely so I've got more of a green sort of fieldy look at the back there and then we go into some sort of uh, sort of patchy stuff and then this is more sort of like a meadowy wild grassing that I've done on this edge on this section here and then with regards to being able to uh, do some edging on here I'm gonna look at um, some stones I was thinking of maybe some cat litter soaking it in some of the um, grey paint like overnight some of that absorbent uh, cat litter placing some of the rocks on the edge there and then I'll be able to do a little bit of uh, sort of ballasting well sorry once I've done the ballasting um, and I know how far the stones are going to fall over on the edge I can then add in some sort of stone details down the bottom here and then add in some sort of tufts and little patches of static grass just to get rid of all of this uh, really dark edge where the paint's run down on this section here so that will kind of then blend in everything up into this section up in the top there um, so yeah all the little finer details will start to come together so that's that section pretty much finished I haven't done the little corner piece there uh, because I'm going to be adding some more hillsides so I'm not sure how far yet I will take it up to the retaining wall at the back there um, but as you can see I started doing this sort of stretch down here and then I'm going to be working on doing the next piece on there um, but as you can see I don't think it looks too bad uh, especially with kind of like a back scene in there it might make it stand out a little bit better so let's just try that so that's it with sort of a temporary back scene in the back there uh, the basic colors of like the fields and stuff is what i wanted to kind of match i don't know if you can see it properly but that kind of green that's in the background there because uh, most of the pictures that I have uh, are these kind of colours so I'm hoping when I get those printed out that they will kind of match uh, but this scene is starting to take shape now it's nice that they're not just some white hills and brown hills I've actually got some sort of colour and variation on the layout a little bit Yeah, I'm so pleased to uh, to be kind of getting this this section looking much better. I think the grasses have worked out quite well with the sort of shape of the hills and stuff. Um, it's always hard seeing these things like quite close up 
but definitely looking from uh, from a distance, like to the eye. Um, you know, they they seem to have worked quite well. And then what I'll be doing is where all of the um, where is it? There's the point there. Uh, so where these like walls are here, I'll be adding like bushes and shrubs to blend in the arches and then been having a bit of a chat with Alan Reynolds uh, we had a bit of a, a whatsapp call the other day talking about uh, watercolor weathering so I'm going to do a little bit of practicing on some of the um, stone sheets that I have before I start weathering up uh, the actual main sections on here but I'm going to add in some uh, sort of climbing brambles and bits and pieces all along each of the arch so every arch will be slightly different and then where the gaps are that's just where it needs to be aligned a little bit but that will sit flush to that side and then like I say just be adding in little bushes and tufts and everything to kind of blend those bits in and then the next part once I'm happy with getting the coverage of static grass over I might add in a few more colors yet yeah, uh, some sort of uh, darker shades to the stuff at the front there I can then blend in the um, hills and the grassing onto the actual baseboard itself
So this is a bit of a tour of the layout so far. So I have one uh, DC line, which this loco is running on. Um, this line is the DCC, which is all fixed in. Uh, this is another DCC line that's all fixed in. And then I'm now working on the third line. So I've got two operational DC, DCC lines. Um, they're just single loops at the moment. I haven't uh, put any point work in yet, but all the droppers are done on those and the loco does run on those sections as well. As you can see, I've added in the three lights for the coal merchants. I've still got to do a little bit of weathering on the roof yet. Uh, just to kind of finish off that scene and then i'll be uh, scratch building some coal bunkers to go in that section i've been working out where this carriage and piece of track is um, my station uh, for tumbler point so i've just been working out the spacings for that one um, what i've done is i found an old bridge that i'd kind of repaired so the left hand side there, I actually uh, used a bit of DAS modeling clay and remade that whole side because it had been cut off. Um, and what I'm gonna do is have some sort of bridges and tunnels and stuff. And then the station will end up going just underneath uh, the bridge there. So this, this side here will be like a, an iron girder bridge. And then we'll have on this line, um, sort of a stone bridge. Um, I fixed in all of the lines down here and placed in the cork um, and then the tracks I've just got to finish off some more cork and stuff uh, but the three lines now run all the way around so excuse the mess all over the floor uh, as you can see I did have all my locos on uh, pieces of track down in this section but I've had to use those to make the third running line. So now this section is just turned into literally a massive uh, modeling station. Um, as you can see, I've uh, been working on bits and pieces and stuff and cutting some cork ready. So these are all like curves and stuff that I've pre-made and then bringing you back round into this section. I've um, just propped up this so that the uh, track was not sort of dipping and stuff. Um, so I'm now working on just placing some temporary cork down on these sections here. Uh, bringing you round back up to the main section. So I've cut my last uh, bit of plaster bandage to do for the viaduct. Uh, leading uh, the last two arches there in the distance. They just need to be uh, put in place over there. And then I can paint that up and then static grass uh, the last half of that piece there. What I have been doing as well is cutting down uh, some three mil ply, uh, ready to go in the top of the um, viaduct I've just got to sand it down a little bit more because it doesn't quite fit I think it's about a mil out and I don't really want to bend the walls for the viaduct uh, but I've got quite a few packs of those uh, so that will stretch all the way down uh, the tops of those then what I'm going to be doing is uh, putting some holes in through here and then equally into and through down the bottom of the baseboard so that I can wire up any uh, dropper wires, any um, signals that I use in the future, or any lighting that I want to do, that I can hide any um, wiring holes and stuff through down here. So it will all just sort of connect up underneath on this section here. So that's um, pretty much it for this tour of what I've been doing, what, what I've been working on, sorry. Um, I'm gonna have to invest in some more static grass just to do uh, the mass of this big section on here. 
Um, I've kind of uh, pre-done some washes over these base sections on here as well, just to kind of blend it all in a little bit. Um, but it's starting to take a little bit of shape, it's, you know, a bit of colour into it. Um, and then I need to work on getting these uh, back scenes sorted and getting some coverage up over these walls as well. Right, so I hope you enjoy the little running session at the end. Thank you for joining me on this video. I hope you've enjoyed seeing what I've been doing over the last four days. It's been quite productive, uh, done quite a lot, and uh, looking forward to the next few days that I do have off. I think I'm on a six day run now of working, so there'll be a break for a week. Think of some more ideas and plans that I'm gonna do, and then I'll be back to doing some more modeling. So thank you everybody for joining. Um, hello and welcome to any new subscribers that have joined me recently. Thank you so much for joining and take care everyone and I will speak to you all soon. Bye for now.